Okay, welcome everyone again. Um, so this is my third, so I'm very connected, so I still feel like a real newbie. Um, but I think a lot of people probably think I've been around far too long. Um, so again, I mean, we've already had this, but thank you to everyone who's come along, and a massive thank you to the organisers. This is a fantastic event. Um, so Mike and I are going to give a presentation that's always given um, by Steri in every conference on this, the current state of Sambera. I think it's pretty good. So we've come a long way. So some, someone who will remain nameless, but somewhere around here, reminded me that it's actually 10 years since the first meeting that, of the project that became Hydra was held. So that was a, in the, at the University of Virginia in, in September 2008. So Hull, Virginia and Stanford and, and people from Fedora were at that. Um, and actually, on a personal note, around the same time in my previous institution, we decided to go fast and go our own way. And then, like four years ago, we decided that that wasn't really working anymore, so we joined Sanvera. So, um, you know, maybe if I could go back 10 years, but... Um, so, this is kind of what I'm going to cover. We're going to do this uh, talk in two sections, so I'm going to look at the state of the community. Uh, Mike's going to look at the state of the, the, the code and the solutions and, and what's going on, on on that side. So I'm going to run through a, a few things. We're going to look at a few bad statistics, we'll talk a little bit about steering and, and the business things, and some of the activities that have been happening over the year. And I'll say a little bit about service providers as well. So we currently have 34 partners. We, we had two new ones this year. We had Emory and Co-Sector at the University of London. Uh, there's one more coming real soon, so keep, keep your eyes open for that. Um, there are currently 756 members of our Sambera Slack, and we reckon maybe um, 150 to 200 of those have been active in the last few weeks. We're actually looking at a paid subscription to Slack because we're, we're, we're sending so many messages on Slack now that we're losing our, our archives really quickly. It's less than a month now that you can actually go back, so, so we're looking into that at the moment. Uh, there are 27 working groups and interest groups listed on the Sambera Wiki. We reckon around 20 of those are currently active, and I'll just sort of point out one or two of those. So there's a core component maintenance group, the Hirax uh, working group, marketing, uh, contribution models, uh, Hirax batch import, export. All of those have been working hard this year, and there are a bunch more. And then just a few figures around this year's Connect. So there are over 150 uh, registered attendees spanning over 60 organisations, two continents and five countries. Thanks, Brian. Um, so I think that's fantastic, but I'd like us to see um, three continents and six countries next year. <laughs> um, so just a little bit about steering. So following on from the government's, uh, governance working group recommendations uh, that were presented last year, there were some suggestions around uh, how steering should, should, be, should be working. So those have been implemented this year. Uh, the main one is that it, it it's now, um, there's now a rolling election process for steering. So there are nine members of steering. There are three places um, that come up for election each year. So three members step down each year. And then each member is, um, serves a three year term. And there can be no um, members, uh, no two members from a single institution. So we want to try and get some institutional diversity. Um, so the three new members for this year are myself, Roslyn Metz and John Rice, who are down the front here. And um, I think I speak for all of us when I say that I really want to understand uh, what the community want from us as steering and what, what they want us to do in, in the way we represent them. We also have one current vacancy. Um, the elections are coming up very soon. The, the candidates are already listed on the wiki. So, you know, if you've got a vote, please use it. I think this is a, a democratic um, community and we all have a voice and um, I'll put some little mug shots up there I hope you like them I, I didn't ask anyone's permission for that so I hope you don't mind <laughs> um, so a few bits about business so one of the things that steering do is look after the sort of business end of, of the Sambera community and, and we're helped in doing that by Juris Base who, who are our fiscal sponsor um, so there are two, two key things to talk about here the trademark so we now have the trademark for the Sambera name in Europe and North America, and we're just waiting on Canada. Um, so no one can take it from us, which is really, really good. And then the logo is going through the same process in uh, the, the three jurisdictions, so hopefully 
Uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that by next year we'll be saying we've got those trademarks across both the, the name and the logo, which will be great. Um, and then in terms of finances, we brought forward $109,000 from 2017. We've been promised $91,000 by you guys, which is great. Thank you very much. Um, we expect running costs this year of around $20,000. Um, so just to list a few of the activities uh, that are not so technically related, which um, Mike will talk about. Um, before I actually do these, as I was walking up to campus today, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm missing some of the, the groups that are still really active. So before I go through these ones, which have been kind of convened this year, I want to just shout out to two groups, um, the Metadata Interest Group and the Repository Managers Working Group uh, Interest Group, because they are both fairly long-standing groups now, they're, they're still active, they do a lot of good work, and, uh, and I want to shout out to those guys and, and also to the members of the community that have got involved in some of the QA testing for the releases, and I think that's been hugely valuable in, in enabling the developers to get those releases out with more confidence and, and to have them fully tested. So these, these three uh, have been working particularly this year around sort of community relevant issues. So contributions working group, so following on from the government's recommendations last year, there was the sense that we'd like some central staff, two central staff, a technical manager and a community manager. And then obviously that begs the question, how are we gonna fund that? So the contributions working group have been looking into if, if that is what we're going to do, how are we gonna pay for that? How are we gonna make that work? But it took a broader uh, look at, at contributions as well. So it started to look at what are people already contributing? How do we figure out those in-kind contributions and the value that we get from the members of the, the community? Um, so the, the group has, has presented a draft report and some recommendations. But what's clear is this is not an easy thing to answer. It's not as simple as saying everyone has to give X amount of cash and everything will be, will be peachy. Um, you know, the world's complex and, and institutions have different uh, pulls on their finances. So um, the, from the partners discussion on Monday, there's going to be another working group to do some more work around this. And I think that's a good thing. I think the willingness to admit that we're not yet ready is a really valuable thing and, and that we need to do more thinking around this. Uh, the second group I wanted to quickly mention is the marketing working group that's led by Chris Orr and Ryan, who are, will be in the room somewhere. Um, so as we grow as a community and as we get more adopters of the software, I think it becomes increasingly important that we are uh, professional in the way we market and present ourselves and that we have uh, content and materials ready for people who need to go out and promote the community. And that's really the focus of this group. Uh, they will provide a little bit of swag, but the key thing for them is, is, uh, is about getting those messages and that content ready for people to use. And I think that's really important. And then the third one, quickly, I've got no watch on, so I have no idea how I'm doing the time. <laughs> um, uh, the third one I just wanted to quickly mention is the Roadmap Council. Um, we've only had one kind of um, introductory meeting of that group, but this again was another recommendation from the um, governance working group which I may be duplicating things that that group are going to say next, but you know, it, it bears saying twice. Um, I'm on that group, and there's a bunch of really good people on that group. I think the important thing to say about that, that group is that it, this is not defining the roadmap for Samvera, it is coordinating the roadmaps that are happening, happening across the, the existing solution bundles. So I like the word that Mark Bussey used the other day, which was that we're more of a clearinghouse, and I think that's really important. We're not a top-down dictatorial group. We're about making sure people aren't duplicating effort or going in different directions and getting the right people in the room and talking. So I think, I think that should be a really, really valuable group. Um, Connect, just, just to, to reiterate, um, Connect 2018 is happening right now, and hopefully everyone's got their lovely mugs. Um, next year it will be in uh, Washington University, St. Louis, um, which I am reliably informed is in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> um, not Washington. <laughs> um, so dates are to be arranged, but I guess it'll be around the same time next year. Virtual Connect, we had the there's, I think the second or third, third, I think, Virtual Connect uh, this July, um, organised by Nabila Jaffa and Chrissy Rismayer, and that was very successful and very well received. There's going to be another one in 2019, if, you, if you're um, interested in helping organise that, um, find Chrissy. Um, they did a really good exercise in getting feedback about Connect, and, and they got some really valuable stuff out of that. You know, it, people really like it, but there are a bunch of useful suggestions in there. One of them was 
let's hold it at six months after Connect rather than a, around the time of uh, open repositories, and I think that one's been taken on board. Um, there's also, there was also suggestions around maybe having multiple events through the year to, to keep that flow of sharing information. So there's, a, there's potential changes coming for, for Virtual Connect, but I think overall it's, a, it's been an overwhelming success. And, you know, as someone who lives um, quite a few miles away from the States, um, it's really good for people in the UK to be able to attend things like that because not that many people can come to these annual events. Uh, lastly, um, just a little shout out to service providers. We've seen uh, more service providers coming into the Sambara space. Um, I've listed the, the four key ones that are working in this area now. I think this is, obviously I'm a bit biased, but I, I think this is a really positive thing because it will allow more people to adopt the software without having to have local development effort. And also all four of those partners contribute a huge amount to this community and I think they, that they all bring bring value and I think this is a, a, another way of, of professionalising this community in a really positive way. And with that, I'll hand over to Mike. Thank you, Julie. Uh, I, I can say it's been a, a pleasure having you on steering. It's been great to have some fresh voices and new faces on steering and uh, you're, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Mike Giarlo, I work for Stanford University and I'm very pleased to be standing in front of you, Sam Vera, to talk to you about the state of the software. Um, I want to stress that these are highlights only. I could not cover all of the work that y'all have done over the past year. There was a lot of it, a lot of really good work, so it was difficult to decide what to highlight here. So um, take it easy if I, if I miss something that was really important to you. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to cover all the good stuff. So I'm going to start with uh, talking about solution bundles because that's an entry point for a lot of folks into this community. And then I'm going to talk about the components that we develop also in the community and then talk about community development sprints as one of the major modes that we use for doing our work. There will be little bits of audience participation sprinkled throughout, so get ready. Prepare your arms. Okay, so this is a, a running tradition of grabbing some stats. This site used to be called Olo, and now it's called OpenHub. And um, I just grabbed a couple screenshots that basically it's, it tells us how many commits we've had over the period of time and tries to estimate the amount of effort that we've collectively spent um, on the code and our code bases. So there's an awful lot of commits and a lot of lines of code. Um, it took an estimated 418 years of effort to get our code. Honestly, I'll put it in a disclaimer. I want to see how they calculate this because, <laughs> I mean, the fact that they also think our major programming language is JavaScript makes me think uh, I may need to, we may need to question this, this segment for next year's presentation. <laughs> but I think the interesting thing to show here is the right-hand side, which does uh, strike me as being uh, faithful to what we do, which is a, uptick uh, trend of more and more contributors uh, per month to the project over the course of its history. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about some solution bundles. Uh, the first one I'll talk about today is Haiku. Haiku is a Hyrax application that is multi-tenant. It was developed as part of the IMLS Hydra in a Box project, which has been over for almost a year. Um, so, What's been, what's been happening with IQ over the last year? So there was a 1.00 beta 2 release late last year. There has somewhat recently, I guess in the last three or four months, been a Haiku interest group formed. Maybe it's been a little longer than that. Um, but so the Haiku interest group has primarily had folks from CoSector, from Notch8, from data creation experts, from Texas Digital Library, um, Ubiquity Press, DuraSpace, Stanford, and Palmy Palsy uh, Consortium. And what they've been really focusing on is talking about pilot installations and starting to, to work together on how to maintain Haiku and enhance it and kind of reinvigorate the Haiku development effort. And that's going really well. Um, two things I want to say about that. Um, one is that they are planning to address the feature gap. So the Haiku Direct pilot project from last year found a few um, common feature gaps in the software that the pilot participants from Haiku Direct um, observed. And so now they're starting to organize around how do, we, how do we close those gaps. 
and in so doing, contribute those features not just to Haiku, but down into the Sanvera stack, so down into Hyrax or down into Hydro Derivatives or whatever the component happens to be. So it's really cool to see that um, coming along. And then I also want to mention the Bridge to Haiku project, which is humming along and is building a bridge um, from Content DM to Haiku and Hyrax installations, and that work is ongoing as well. That's the University of Houston as the primary on that project. Okay, now I'm going to tell you about Avalon. Avalon is an AV delivery um, and management system based on Sanvera components. There have, if my count is right, there have been eight releases since last Connect. Um, the releases include some really cool new features, including a media player upgrade. You no longer need Flash. And, an ad and adaptive bitrate streaming, so it can automatically detect your bandwidth and adjust the, um, the streaming quality to match what you, can, um, what you can handle. So that's been happening. At the same time, uh, Avalon has been uh, even more transparent and ra raising more awareness about the work that they're doing through a set of Avalon uh, forums, so a monthly webinar series, and also through an, an office hours approach that they've been taking, kind of similar to an office hours approach we took for Haiku and that we found very valuable. I hope it has been valuable for Avalon folks as well. Coming soon. Um, well, I won't say, I'm not sure how soon. I'll let, I'll, let, I'll let them talk about that. I don't want to steal too much thunder. Uh, but Avalon 7 is, um, is an ongoing uh, focus of effort, and um, it will be based on Hyrax, and we'll have more of the AV functions uh, made modular so that you can use parts of Avalon without committing to the whole thing for whatever reason. That's Avalon. Uh, I'm going to talk about Fulcrum too. So Fulcrum is a publishing platform and a set of publishing services that would be used typically by university press or a scholarly publishing outfit. Otherwise, um, it includes an ebook reader and it has a really strong focus on accessibility and mobile support. That was really clear for me when I was to me when I was looking at the uh, the Fulcrum documentation. Um, there have been, I, could, I started counting the number of releases since last Connect and I got bored. Sorry, there's so many releases <laughs> and you should be commended for that. It's, it's awesome. There have been like dozens of releases since last Connect. And um, one of the recent milestones is their 2.0 release, which is based on Hyrax 2. Okay, uh, next up is Sufia and curation concerns. So those of you who've been coming to these Connects for a while know that there was an effort however long ago, a year or two, and we had an architecture working group and we decided to uh, basically create on-ramps to Hyrax from Sufia and curation concerns. And I'm happy to say that thanks to the, the diligent work of the component maintenance, maintenance working group, uh, both of those components have now officially been deprecated. That doesn't mean you can't contribute security patches or backports. It doesn't mean that you can't cut releases, but what it does mean is that we are clearly communicating as a community what our expectations are about, say, maintainability of these components, which I think is important, especially for new folks coming into the community. Okay, Hyrax. So um, there have been 15 releases since last Connect, um, including some, some big milestone releases, those being 2.0, which was the upgrade path from curation concerns, and 2.1, which included the collection extensions work, which I'll talk about in just a couple minutes. Um, the 2.3 and 2.4 series had a really strong focus on accessibility, which followed an independent, I think, third-party um, accessibility audit that uh, we undertook. And I, I saw this number. I can't vouch for it. Someone can. 70% uh, of these accessibility um, issues have been, uh, have been remedied. All right. I got a thumbs up from Tom. I feel pretty confident about that number now. <laughs> Um, so, I also want to briefly um, give a happy anniversary to Steve Van Tile, who's been the product owner of Hyrax for the past year, and, uh, <laughs> and also to Tom Johnson, who's been the tech lead for the past six months. You're halfway to your first anniversary, so great job, you guys. Um, and you're going to be hearing a lot more about Hyrax and um, its roadmap uh, in the morning plenary, I do believe. Coming soon is the batch import export work and analytics, which I think many of us have been looking forward to for a while. Okay, but none of these solution bundles would exist without the, the rich set of Samvera components that underlie them. None of these are built on, you know, none of these are built from scratch using all custom code. These all use our shared component tree. 
Uh, and I think it's true that everyone in the room who's adopted Samvera, some of you chose to go with solution bundles, some of you have chosen not to, and we should continue to expect this to be the case, that some people will want to build from components and some people will want to build from solution bundles, and that's fine. Uh, so let's talk about components. Um, again, just highlights, couldn't cover it all. Uh, there's the permission, how am I in time, by the way? Does anyone know? Okay, okay, I'll, I'll speed it up. Uh, so there's been a permission analysis and, and uh, design working group that, that has been done. Permissions have been a really gnarly corner in our code and design for a long time. And so the analysis of how permissions work and gathering requirements for what people need from them was a really important effort. Uh, that has happened and I believe that group did a webinar uh, last month. Uh, and it's going to be an active discussion here this week about how, how slash whether we take this forward. So stay tuned for that. There is the code stability working group. This I believe was an outgrowth of last year's Connect or the last partner meeting. And this was really an effort to come to some shared values around what we expect from our code, things around semantic versioning, uh, deprecation warnings, being clear about what's public and private within an interface. Um, documented upgrade paths, all things that I think we need as a community if we're to consider our software mature and um, for us to be kind to one another about expectations. All right, um, up next is the component maintenance working group. This was another super important effort. Um, it identified our core components and identified product owners for all the core components so decisions could be made about them and so that we could actually maintain our software independent of the effort that goes into solution bundle maintenance, which is, again, super important. Um, I think there's about 17 core components. Looking for, uh, all right, that, I'll take that. Um, and you, you're definitely gonna hear a lot more about this one, so I'm not gonna go into very great detail. Um, there have been two phases for this working group. There probably will be a third one. It'd be great to see it continue to uh, thrive. And then two other components I wanted to highlight, uh, QA, questioning authority and Valkyrie, both of them have seen numerous releases um, since the last Connect and really important ones. For instance, Valkyrie hit the 1.0 uh, milestone and there's been a bunch of really exciting features um, that have been added since then, which I understand are gonna be presented, so I'm gonna skip because I'm running low on time. Uh, so the way that this community tends to work on solution bundles and components tend to be enhanced and maintained via community development sprints. Um, there was the collection extension sprint which added collection types to Hyrax. So this is the notion that you can have different kinds of collections that have different behaviors, particularly around like nesting and branding, um, about single versus multiple membership and collections. And that did land in Hyrax 2.1, which was um, I think in spring. Uh, Valkyrie, there have been uh, five releases, including the milestone release. Some more about some of the features here, single values, optimistic locking, ordered properties. Ordered properties is a feature that isn't in Active Fedora and is supported by Valkyrie, which I think many of us have been looking for for, for quite some time. There was work to begin Valkyrizing Hyrax, so to strip out the Active Fedora dependency and substitute in Valkyrie. That work was done over two sprints last winter and we got really close to our first milestone, which was like just get the test suite passing. And then things happened, it fell off. Uh, those branches are still out there, so I expect another conversation we'll be having this week is about how we take that forward now. Um, yeah. All right, and then I also wanna give some attention to the Hyrex Working Group. They've been convened since July, and I, remember I said there have been 15 releases of Hyrex since last year. 11 of those have just been since July. And this is owing to the work of the Hyrax Working Group. And what this is, is a small group of folks who have been dedicated to work on Hyrax. They're not necessarily promised specific features. It's not necessarily scoped to you know, a particular effort, but they're working on Hyrax for a set period of time so that there can be maintenance work and roadmap work done over the long haul. And that's coming along really well. Now coming soon is there will be some improvements to continuous integration, which is a testing technique but it's extremely slow and brittle and it's been a real kind of um, hindrance to the developers on that team. So again, high level updates, um, giving you some bits 
I, I forgot to do audience participation because I ran low on time. But if everyone would just raise their hand now, that could approximate what we would have done over time. Awesome. <laughs> all right, great. So I'm done. We're done. The state of San Vera is strong. Thank you all for coming. And up next is the governance working group. Uh, <laughs>